Hey everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to our Objective C for Absolute Beginners class. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about Chapter 3, all about data and learning how in Xcode to uh, manipulate data. Um, again, this is going to be in Chapter 3 from my book, um, Objective C for Absolute Beginners, second edition. Uh, the first part of the chapter in Chapter 3 talks about the different data types there are, formatting specifiers, manipulation of the data, and then an example application using the ALICE um, interactive development environment. Um, and I use Alice at the beginning of the first four chapters uh, to introduce the topics because you don't have to know um, and deal with a complex IDE like Xcode. And then in the second part of the chapter, I do it in Xcode so you get a little bit more comfortable and learn the principles. Uh, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, uh, you can watch the classes live and ask questions at the end of the presentation just by going to my website, excelme.com, and clicking on the free videos. And um, you can uh, join the webinars live and, again, ask questions at the end of the class uh, with me about any topic that you want in programming. Um, in, uh, in iOS and Mac development and then also the past webinars are here and if you join the, um, the my YouTube channel when you're watching it um, you get automatic updates uh, from YouTube when I upload new recordings alright so with that um, and then of course um, for the complete covering of chapter 2 and all the cat chapters feel free to visit my uh, my classes and if you're interested take a class Okay, so let's go ahead and get started talking about manipulating data in Xcode and using Xcode and our IDE. I'm going to go ahead and launch Xcode. I already got it running. Um, and I'm going to make a new project. And let's get it on the right screen here. It's always good if you're not already used to it, uh, using a, uh, a second uh, monitor makes, uh, makes it nice. And I got Xcode jumping around here on my windows awesome just a second it's way over here there it is it uh, formatted for my other monitor and I'm going to do a command line tool yeah, you don't normally have to do this again yeah, it's just the way it is and I'm going to call this project um, all about data And I'm going to choose foundation and automatic reference counting, which we talk about later what that is. Very important and new and useful for us in iOS development, especially with the new iOS 5. And I'm going to save my project on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. It's going to go ahead and open up my project with my settings. And I'm going to go to main.com. Main.m, I'm sorry. All right, so here is the project all set and kind of built for us here, and kind of stubbed out. And um, let's just um, let's just talk about working with data. Typically, we with data we might be working with numbers, adding and subtracting and comparing numbers. We might also do it with strings. Um, uh, you can think of a string as a series of characters. Um, so let's. Um, Typically, you know, look at something that we may have done in algebra back in the day. You know, having a variable, again, a variable is some place that we store data, and we're going to assign it the number five. Well, the computer before it works with that variable x and starts recognizing what x is, it needs to have some more information. All variables, variables that hold data, need to know what type of data it's holding. Now, to you and I, um, it may look, hey, this is, um, that is obviously a number, you know. It's a number, you stupid computer, you should know that. Well, it might be, but, you know, what if it was, you know, a password? Sorry if I could get my hands here right. You know, what if it was a password? Well, you know, it, it started off looking like a number, but later on I might add to it. It might have been really a string, a series of characters. Or it might have been what we call a float, a decimal point. 
Um, so we've got to tell it what we mean it to be. Well, I want this to be an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and assign, um, assign the type of data to it. I'm going to say, hey, this is an integer, and it's assigned to the value of 5. I'm getting a warning right now because it's saying, hey, you have, you've made this um, variable up, but you haven't, you haven't done anything with it yet. And really, what it's, it's also good the compiler is helping you as a programmer, but it's also going to tell you, hey, at one time when I compile this application, and if you didn't use this variable x, I'm not going to really compile it into the code. It's going to be treated as being commented out. Just kind of optimizes your code to do that. So we're going to take care of that in a second. And let's do the same thing with um, another variable. And we're going to make another one up, call it um, y. We're going to be real, um, real, real creative here. And I'm going to go ahead and add these variables together x plus y, and of course we end our lines with semicolons. Well, again, we've kind of done the same thing here. We've, uh, we've declared a variable, but we didn't tell it the type. All right, so I made it a type integer. And let's say at the conclusion of this, we want to go ahead and print it out using NSLog, our handy dandy kind of debug tool that we're going to learn a lot about later on. So um, I'm going to say here, instead of hello world, um, the sum of x and y is, and um, I'm going to do my uh, format specifier, which I talk about on page 55 of my book. I leave you all the format specifiers. Um, I'm going to do the percent %d, which is basically going to say, hey, this is, this is, um, I'm going to substitute the percent %d with whatever parameter you pass into me, and I'm going to say it's z, right? So it's going to put the sum right there where that percent %d is. And if you'd like to see more on the different format specifiers, and we'll have some time here at the end, I'll go over some of the, the more interesting and, and useful format specifiers. But again, if you go to page 55 of my book, a little bit further down here, oh, further up, right here, you can see the different format specifiers. You know, for a character, we'll talk about how to work with strings later on floats and doubles and double longs, those are the format specifiers for them. Um, so let's go ahead and run this program and, and see what it does. Go ahead and open up Xcode and uh, we'll compile and run it. Hopefully everything will run as expected, but just because it compiles doesn't mean it's going to run as expected. The computer will do what you tell it to do, not what you mean to do. All right, well, if I look here in my output, I can see, let me just kind of get this over here just a bit. There we go. Um, the sum of x and y is 12, all right, just what we told it. Well, what if we do things like, um, what if we did something like this? Uh, let's make that 12. Let's make that a 6. And... Um, Let's do something like a division. Compile and run it. All right. So, you know, obviously I need to say the maybe change here the sum of. I, could, I should say maybe the result of. A little technically, a little more technical, correct? The result is percent D. Well, what if I did, uh, what if I did something like this? Um, 15. Well, 6 doesn't divide evenly into 15. We have a remainder um, that we need to deal with. Lost my output window, bring that back. 
but you can see here I still get two, right? It's two with the remainder of three, right? Um, but it gets chopped off. That's because we said that z was going to be um, z was going to be an int, and ints hold round numbers. Well, we can change this to a float z. But here we're getting a warning that basically says, hey, you got a type here. You're expecting um, a float, um, but you're because it's a percent d, and um, or expect you're expecting an integer, but you're passing a float. You should fix it with a percent f for the float. That's just really nice now with the new LLVM compiler. It kind of gives us these nice fix it helper helper and suggestion um, error messages. So now let's run it and um, we're not going to format it real nice uh, but uh, here you can see well what's the issue here? Z is a float 6 into 12 is a remainder um, what is going on? Well, I'll let you read the chapter and the homework um, as a homework assignment for our next assignment to, on, on learning to properly format um, floats. Um, and likewise, if you wanted to do, you know, a long, you know, here, go here with our fix it and it's given us the format specif specifier for a long and we'll go ahead and run it and we'll get our little errors right here or not our errors but our result but it's still we still haven't quite figured out the rounding of it correctly and you know there's different format specifiers you can try and work with I encourage you to do so to get the result that you're looking for. Okay. And then we'll we'll talk more in the later on in the in the later chapters on how to work with um, strings and the different classes. We need to learn a little bit more about working with classes and how to handle all kinds of data including strings. Um, I will take questions at the end of this recording here when I stop the uh, recording for those that are watching YouTube. I'll take those uh, questions for those that are attending live. And um, next week we're going to be talking about how to use conditions and checking results with if statements and comparing data. And that will be in Chapter 4. Again, if you have any questions, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or if you're live, feel free to you can email me at Gary at ExcelMe. Um, or if you're one of my students, you have my Skype address as well. You can go ahead and Skype me. Again, look forward to seeing you in my next class, class number four, all about data. And um, have a great evening. Thanks a lot for attending. Good night.